Bangkok Leyland launches three new truck variants in intermediate and medium vehicle commercial category. Anuj Katuria, the president of Global Trucks of the company, talks about market share of the ICV portfolio and also the growth outlook of the whole CV industry going forward. Take a look. ICV is a growing segment and we have seen a 30% growth this year and we expect that uh, as the hub and spoke model keeps on maturing, the growth for uh, the ICV trucks will further uh, be better and uh, the next year is the pre-buy year, so I expect further growth in this segment. Uh, tell us also about the boss variants that you've launched uh, in the MHCV se segment. You saw a 9% growth year on year in sales in January. Uh, the rest of the industry has lagged behind that. Uh, do you think the headwinds are behind us? The worst is behind us. We've seen the NBFC crisis. We had uncertainty over axle load norms. Quite a lot of headwinds there. You think the worst is behind us in that regard? Uh, yes, the worst is definitely behind us. And uh, talking specifically about the boss 1616 and the 1916, these products have been engineered keeping in mind the new axle load norms. As you know that we have launched it in four loading spans. It goes right from 18 feet right up to 31 feet. So this vehicle is the most suited vehicle uh, for applications such as the e-commerce, the white goods. Uh, with regard to these products specifically, are you going to be launching uh, left-hand drive variations to export as well? And also, uh, there was a bit of trouble in the export markets, especially Sri Lanka and the Middle East. Are you seeing that come down now? See, as far as LHD variants, BOSS is always available as a LHD. And BOSS being our premium segment offering in the ICV. Uh, this month, we are uh, exporting uh, vehicles to Russia. Okay. So BOSS in its Euro 5 version is always available in LHD. It is also available in BS, uh, equivalent of BS4, that is Euro 4 for other markets. So this is being uh, seeded in different markets. Uh, and the question about trouble in export markets such as Sri Lanka and Middle East, have you seen that come down? Is demand picking up there as well? There, are cert there were certain challenges, but uh, things are getting better. And we hope that in the coming year, things will improve further. Uh, from here on, all uh, resources are going to be used to meet the BS6 uh, requirement. Also tell us about uh, what your CapEx expenditure is going to be for FY20. See, as far as the BS4 portfolio, we have a robust portfolio now. The range is complete. Uh, we launched the 16-wheel vehicle also, which was the first in the market. And it, has, it comes along with many unique features, which ensures uh, better profitability for the customer because it focuses on uh, almost zero maintenance on the vehicles. So we have given unitized bearings, we have given sealed ball joints, the slipper-ended suspension, which is a low maintenance suspension. So we have taken care of those features. So with that, our BS4 portfolio is complete. Well, moving on then, promoter borrowing from the mutual fund industry has recently come under the public scrutiny in light of the fall in share prices that are often pledged as collateral for such loans. Now, after Z Group, it is the Anil Ambani Group that has done the same. We spoke to a whole host of experts to understand what they make of the situation. Hear them out. When the rating is being done, the value, the some bit of, uh, some bit of the importance being given for the underlying value of the company. As long as the underlying value of the company is reasonably good, against which I think the promoter's funding has been done, then it can have some kind of uh, some kind of uh, say on the overall rating process. You have to manage independently the way I think uh, how to protect the interest of investors. And what has have, have been happening in the last one or two months, uh, it's something is unique. At the same time, one should also not forget the fact that industry is about five years back at about eight lakh crore, today is about fifteen lakh crores. And as it is, the industry is expected to grow actually the bigger as, as time comes. So as the time evolves, the naturally the risk, the way I think you manage the risk has to also undergo a change. The alternative source of financing in my view will replace actually the whole market. Having said that, last is a business cannot die and given the fact this is one of the instruments through which most of the funding has been happening in the country so far, in the, so, so far uh, till date. Do those entities which are predominantly retail in nature, they would continue to uh, get access to the money. Uh, of course, uh, you know, specific entities and this thing will have certain issues depending on their own uh, balance sheets. Second part, uh, where the assets are predominantly uh, wholesale assets, either in the, it is real estate or it is, uh, you know, LAS or any other, fine, other kinds of assets, obviously the availability will depend upon the quality of the assets they are running and how the lender is looking at it. And of course, the pricing for those uh, kinds of risk would obviously be 
uh, you know higher than compared to the retail assets which are there for the housing finance companies and others i think uh, the promoters pledging their equity uh, uh, i think uh, that is something uh, uh, which needs to be watched on and it is not the right business model because if you have pledged your equity it means that your stake in the enterprise must be deducted to that extent then your net equity has to be determined so that is something a debatable issue but uh, uh, over leveraging your own equity i don't think it is a very good idea any sector it is not untouchable for the banks but the quality banks or nbfcs themselves will have to be very mindful of this fact that uh, the quality is not compromised Okay, so that's the word coming in from experts regarding the high promoter borrowing against their shares. But it is time now for a quick break on the show. But as we do that, we'll leave you with some exclusive opinion coming in from investing legend Charlie Munger, who spoke with CNBC's Betty Quick on investing, valuations and much more. Take a look. It isn't like the last recession or the last big opportunity that the world is ever going to get has passed. There'll be opportunities in the future. There are times when they're easier and there are times when are, which are harder. A, the valuations have come up, and B, the competition sorting through those opportunities is more intelligent and more aggressive and more numerous. Well, I think valuations will come, will go up and down because they always have. And, and I think we'll have smart people in, the, in this game forever. The opportunities that we all remember came from a demoralized period when about 90% of the natural stock buyers got very discouraged with stocks. That's what created the opportunity for these fabulous records that my generation had.